Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, if you look, I'm working on the old sawmill. If you notice, looking behind me, there's some stuff missing off of it. The gas tank, the shroud, all that kind of stuff. Well, let me tell you something. There's absolutely nothing, in my estimation, worse than having mice. I come out here to saw a little log yesterday, and this daggum thing wouldn't hit a lick. So first thing I done, I started just checking around everything, and I found out that somehow or another, the mice had gotten in on top of my battery, and they had built a big old mice nest. There's just all kinds of mess inside there, and they are chewing my positive post to my battery. So I, I'm still looking around and trying to find out how come I don't have any, any spark. And I see that the up underneath here, going to the magnetron, that ground wire, actually is chewed on pretty bad. It's got a sheath that goes up over the top of it. It's chewed on pretty bad. But that should have no effect on not having spark unless they chewed through and some of the bare wires is actually touching onto the, the body of the motor, so to speak, and that's going to ground out the magnetron. Now these are fitted with essentially a magnetron like you'd have on a ride lawnmower or anything like that. And the way the magnetron works is there's a permanent magnet on the flywheel and whenever it passes through this coil right here, those pickup points on that coil, at a specific distance away from it, it'll generate a spark and that puts, that's what gives you the spark to your spark plug. And then to shut it off, you actually have a series of grounds that actually go to ground. Like when you turn the key off, you're actually not disconnecting power, you're actually grounding out that magnetron so it kills the spark. The same thing with all of your safety devices. You've got your little proximity switches. You have your little proximity switches that are on the doors of these machines. And you've also got your manual emergency shutdown, that red stop button. What those guys do essentially is if you open the door, it'll automatically ground the magnetron and kill it either one of the doors, or if you push that emergency stop, it'll ground that magnetron and kill the motor. So, I'm just going through the routine of figuring out what's going on where I've lost my spark at, and I finally found out that I can't figure it out, and i tell you what the deal is. Of course, before I tell you it, I can't find it, I'm going to tell you what I do to troubleshoot. The simplest way to do these magnetrons is go ahead and pull your spark plug out so that you can actually see a spark or whatever, leave everything in, in, intact, and then go ahead and ground the spark plug body over to the side of the head or the cylinder or whatever metal piece you can and you'll see that there's no spark. So what you do is you know it has to be a grounding situation. So if you have quick access to the one wire that plugs onto the magnetron, you can, you can disconnect the entire grounding circuit or safety circuit series by pulling that wire off of the magnetron and then test it. Once you pull that one wire off of the magnetron, eliminating any potential for ground, hit the starter button with the spark plug grounded on the side, and you see that there is spark, you know that one or more of those safety devices are grounding out the circuit, okay? If at that point you've got that wire pulled off and you don't have any spark, you can strongly suspect that the magnetron is what the fault is. There's no reason to believe that the magnetron is faulty. So what I've done is I went ahead and disassembled everything so that I can get in here and take a look really, really close at these blue wires. Okay, now this is the, the mounting part for the ignition switch, just right here. Any of you guys with the Frontier Mills know that, you're familiar with it. Well, on the lower mounting of the switch is where all these blue wires attach. Now those blue wires are the grounding side of the three safety devices. Three safety devices meaning the proximity switch on the left door and on the right door and on the emergency stop. So what you can do, you can take those wires all off of that screw and see if you have spark, okay? If you have spark, then you know that there's one of those circuits is gonna be the culprit. So what you can do is put one of them back on, turn it, and see if there's spark. If there's no spark, that circuit is the culprit. But if you go ahead and put the other two on and you have spark, you know that you have trouble did the troubleshooting correctly and the very first one that you pull off was the faulty one because for whatever reason, it's still supplying the ground. You remove that ground, you have spark, that's what the issue is, defective switch. So at any rate, to make a long story short, I went through this whole ordeal of pulling these off of here and doing every single one of them one by one. I actually had a couple of faulty connections in here, kind of a poor crimp connection in here. And when I was separating the terminals, the wire actually pulled out of the little clip. So I had to reattach those wires in there, crimp them, crimp them down really well, and then make sure that they're not gonna give out again. I went ahead and had to pull the starter off in order for me to get in and do all that kind of stuff and actually look and see where all these wires go. But then once I found that out, it's really quite simple. But anyway, I went ahead and started doing the process of figuring out which one was grounding out, because obviously there is a problem there. And uh, I got all the way down to the last one, and I did not have a problem. So I don't know if it was moisture, maybe uh, some sawdust, maybe some moist sawdust or whatever, 
that was actually shorting out one of the switches and I strongly suspect it's the one on the far door over there because that one has got a little spring on it. It doesn't feel just exactly right even though every time I manually work it, it seems to be working. But I think that's the faulty one. And by the time I went through all the troubleshooting, whatever was incorrect on that particular switch went back and corrected itself and now I've got spark where I need to be with everything attached. So with all the grounds, all the blues back on, I now have spark when I turn the key on. So that means it's going to start whenever I put everything back together. I was kind of disappointed that it didn't actually find it, but because that little springy deal on that proximity switch is kind of funky feeling, I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is over there. And it's going to show up again in no time at all once I get it back together and go back to working on it. So at any rate, to make a long story short, I think it's much better to use these things every single day than it is to let it set for a month because it's been sitting here for, you know, just a little bit since I've done that last video when the sun was shining, you know. And um, and also I had a chance for the little mice to get up here and do some chewing. So now my battery cable, my positive battery cable is halfway chewing off. Uh, and I've got other nick nicks, chews and everything, you know, chew spots and stuff in there. But as far as the no spark issue, the mice had nothing to do with that. So... I've been cussing those mice all afternoon for no reason at all, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together. Now that I know I for sure have spark, we're going to see if it'll fire right up. As I'm reassembling, I've got the ignition back on. I've got the wiring all connected back over there. And I just want to verify that we didn't go back to having another issue. So hopefully you're going to be able to see the spark right here. Very good, strong spark, so uh, that's really uh, encouraging. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the spark plug in, set the gas tank back in place. Like I said, you can see I got the ignition switch back in place and everything grounded back the way it's supposed to be and all these wires where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and slip the spark plug back in the hole and then uh, we're going to go ahead and set the gas tank on and see what happens. Well, I've got the tank back on, fuel line connected up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if we lost spark. I got the spark plug in, so it should fire up. I, I'm anticipating a little bit of trouble because it's been so long and I might have a flooded, uh, all kind of things. So let's see. Guess I'll tell you it's not recommended work on these with the exposed flywheel and all that stuff. But I didn't want to get everything back together and find out that I locked something down and grounded something in. Because there still is a possibility that I've got some mouse chewings in there that's actually grinding, grounding out. And it's not that switch or that safety switch that's on that door. So uh, I just want to check it every step of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more stuff on and we'll fire it back up again, I hope. Tell you, one of the things I'm going to address in the very near future is uh, the lid of this. I'm going to seal this lid to where they don't have this opening right here to allow those mice to get up in there and then build those uh, nests and just make that mess all over the inside of that battery compartment. Just not now. I'm going to do that very shortly. Well, guys, it's all back together now. Don't have anything left over extra. So, uh, and that was about 10 minutes ago whenever I just started it. So it should, it should fire right back up again fairly easily. So let's go ahead and give it a choke anyway. A little bit of throttle. Well guys, I guess we can say this operation was a success. Kind of frustrating, you know. Uh, the doggone mice building nests up in there, that's just not cool. I'm going to go ahead and make a, a cover for the front of that with nothing but those wires uh, coming through a small opening, or maybe two small openings. Uh, and that's going to solve that issue of getting into the battery compartment. However, crawling all over the, the motor and having an opportunity to chew on those wires like they've done already is just aggravating to me. So I'm going to set a couple of mouse traps there, and I think I'm going to check them daily you know, or every couple of days, you know what I mean, and uh, see if I can get on top of the situation. As usual, there's really nothing real crazy sophisticated about most of this machinery. You just got to figure out what it is that you got. There's a couple of things on there I don't really understand what is, but I'll figure it out sooner or later. You know, whenever I do, obviously I'll make a video on it 
and uh, allow you guys to uh, benefit from, from the issues that I'm having with it. All in all, still, this has been a very nice machine. I've had very few problems with it whatsoever and no complaints except for it sure does work you a lot harder than working a circle mill you know the heft is just not there on these machines like they are on a big big framed big heavy circle mill at any rate i think we can put this one here to rest and i can't think of anything else to talk about concerning that magnetron i think i covered it okay but just remember that that one wire uh, if you just pull that one wire off of the magnetron and then you have spark then you know that somewhere in that wire it's grounding out or in that wire circuitry it's grounding out. Now what this thing does, it has those three safeties, the two proximity switches and then the third emergency stop, that red. And all of those have a common grounding stud back here behind the key switch that the other side of all those switches go to to ground out. So I'll reiterate, what you can do is you can remove those wires one at a time until you find spark. Whenever you find that you have spark, that's the circuit that it was in. This proximity switch, that proximity switch, or the uh, emergency stop button. So you know what? Uh, that's about all there is to it. i got to get this thing covered up. This Tractor Man 44, another quick and simple one put to rest. And you know what? I am out of here, guys.